Now the second one, chapter analysis, where we are going to read uh, about the two paragraphs in the beginning, uh, which is on page number four. So open the page number four. I am going to read the first paragraph and the second one. Uh, now here, for fourteen and a half months, I lived in my little cell or room in the Hiradun jail. and i begin to feel as if i was almost a part of it i was familiar with every bit of it i knew every mark and every dent on the white washed walls and on the uneven floors and the ceiling with its moth eaten rafters so when you live in a small room for such a long time you kind of observe each and every part of it and that's what he did he was in the jail for around 14 and a half month more than a year and that's why he is describing that in the little yard outside i greeted little tufts of grass and odd bits of stone as old friends i was not alone in my cell for several colonies of wasps and hornets lived there wasps wasps and hornets are a kind of uh, uh, choti madhmakhiyan hoti hain peele rang ki to unke chatte wahan lage hue the unke cell mein in the little yard uh, uh, outside i greeted little tufts of uh, of grass and odd bits of stone as old friends i was not alone in myself for several colonies of wasps and hornets lived there and many lizards found a home behind the rafters emerging in the evenings in surroundings <clears throat> the very air of that cell must be thick with them and they must cling for every object in the little space so this is the first paragraph uh he was in the dehradun jail uh and uh, he started observing when he went to when when you stay in a very small place for such a long time you observe you start observing and you get sensitive towards each and every part of your life because you get so much time for yourself so uh, this is the first paragraph the second paragraph is i had had better cells in the other prisons but in dehradun i had one small one and we were kept in an old lock up outside the jail walls but within the jail compound so the jail in dehradun was where he was uh, their rooms were it was outside the main jail walls but inside the jail compound This place was so small that there were there was no room to walk about in it and so we were allowed morning and evening to go out and walk up and down in front of the gate a distance of about 100 yards we remained in the jail compound but this com- coming outside the walls gave us a view of mountains and the fields and a public road at some distance this was not a special privilege for me it was common for all the a and b class prisoners kept in dehradun so at that time there were classes between the prisoners there were a and b which was uh, the the jail authorities has given them a little bit of more privilege than the other one, other uh, other uh, Uh, jailers but uh, privilege means suvidha uh, suvidha unko zyada di jati thi dusre qaidiyon ki tulna mein par uh, ye unke liye bahut bada uh, koi bahut badi cheez nahi thi because uh, <coughs> an a and b class prisoners that time uh, there was no political prisoners as such uh, these days there are political prisoners as well so after the independence uh the political prisoners uh there was a section of political prisoners they get more 
privilege than the normal prisoners. So now, um, within the compound, but outside the jail walls, there was another small building called the European Lockup. This has no enclosing wall, and a prisoner inside the cell could have have a fine view of the mountains and the life outside European conduct convicts. European convicts and other kept here were also allowed to walk in front of the jail gate every morning and every evening. Convicts ka matlab hota hai jo kadi hota hai jinko saza mili hoti hai. So here he has said that uh, there was one more section where uh, the convicts, European convicts at the time of World War II or World War I, I guess, uh, when they they catch some uh, other prisoners, some other people from outside like Germany, then they will keep it, th keep them in the European convict prisoner cells. Third paragraph, only a prison who has been confined for for long behind high walls can appreciate the extraordinary psychological value of these outside walks and open views. I loved these outings and I, I did not give them up even during the monsoon. When the rain came down for days in torrents and I had to walk in ankle deep water, I would have welcomed the outing in any place but the sight of the towering Himalayas nearby was an added joy which went a long way to remove to removing the weir, weariness of prison it was my good fortune that during the long period when i had no interviews and when my when for many months i was quite alone i could gaze at these mountains that i loved i could not see the mountains from my cell but my mind was full of them and i was ever conscious of these of their nearness and a secret intimacy seemed to grow between us here he is trying to tell about the uh, the uh, the thoughts behind behind what he is writing when of course when you are in a prison for such a long time you try to notice you start no noticing very few parts of your life very some parts some feelings about yourself about you th think about yourself you think about the nature which you are seeing luckily for him it was uh, he was lucky enough to get the get the view of Himalaya um, and it was he was kind of very near to him uh, he felt very close to them. He felt very close to the nature. That's what he is describing here. Now that f uh, four lines that he has written as a poem, it's written here like, Flocks of birds have flown high and away. A, solid a solitary drift of clouds too has gone wandering on. And I sit alone with Ching Ting Peak towering beyond. We never grow tired of each other, the mountains and I. He's writing uh, in the first two lines that everyone is going away. The, the, the birds has, has flown away and the clouds are also not permanent in his life. They are also gone. But the only permanent thing at that time in his life was that Himalaya who was who stood there high for him and and that's why they never they never got tired of each other it means that uh, he never felt alone because of that mountain um, now the fourth paragraph I am afraid I cannot say with the poet Li Ti Aipo Li Ti Aipo is a Chinese poet who was born in 19 uh, in 701 uh, till 762 and he was a very fam famous poet at that time 
he has written around 40,000 poems or something. And uh, at that time he was one of the, there were two poets uh, in China at that time and he was one of them uh, who was very, very famous. So he is writing about Nehru, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru is writing about him that I'm afraid I cannot say with the, po with the poet T. Lee T. I. Po that I never grow, I never grew very weary even of the mountain. Lee T. I. Po or called as uh, uh, Lee, Lee Bai, he was kind of, he was a drunkard, he used to drink a lot but he used to imagine things, he used to be very sensitive about uh, about the mountains, about the nature and he his poetic style was very different and he's not comparing he's saying Jawaharlal Nehru is saying that I cannot compare myself with him he uh, he was a great poet but still I try to uh, catch up with him uh, now that I never grew weary even of the mountain but that was a rare experience as and as a rule I found great comfort in its proximity. So proximity means nikatta. Um, uh, he is saying that he was very um, fortunate enough to have the proximity with the with the with the comfort and with the mountains. Its solid solidity and calm looked down upon me with the wisdom of million years and mocked at my varying moods and soothe my fevered mind. So he's trying to say that the mountain was kind of mocking him all the time. Mazakurana uh, or kyunki ye itne dino se prison mein the and he was very moody and he was being very moody at some, uh, some times. He was being sad or happy about it and he um, and the mountain was kind of a symbol for him that see I'm here, the mountain is saying that I'm here, I'm a permanent person, I don't get affected by anything in my life. So that's what he's trying to say in the fourth paragraph. Now the fifth one. The spring was very pleasant in the Hradun and it was a far longer one than in the plain below. The winter had denuded Along, uh, almost all the trees of their leaves. So in winter, in in the springtime, all the trees, their leaves get uh, leave the trees, and they uh, the tree is kind of only skeleton. So he's describing that. Uh, and they stood naked and bare. Every four magnificent people trees. Even four magnificent people trees, which stood in front of the jail gate, much to my surprise, dropped nearly all the all their leaves. Ja ga gant and cheerless, they stood there till the spring air warmed them, warmed them up again, and sent a message of life to their innermost cells. Here, he is saying that. Um, he's describing about the tree, people ke peer jo hote the, even wo uh, thandiyo mein khali ho jate the, unke patte gir jate the. And then when the spring comes, the warmth of the whole nature brings the life in those trees. Suddenly there was a stir both in the peoples and the other trees and an air of mystery surrounded them as of secret op operations going on behind the scene. Here he is describing in a, a bit um, theatrical way that uh, <clears throat> in the spring uh, something is happening behind the wall, behind the trees, uh, a magical thing is happening that these trees are getting life again. Um, something is in the air of the spring that give that gives them life and i would be startled to 
to find little bit of green peeping out all over them. It was a gay and cheering sight. And then very rapidly the leaves would come out in their millions and glister in the sunshine and play about in the breeze. How wonderful is the sudden change from bud to leaf. Now the sixth one, sixth paragraph. I had never noticed before the fresh mango leaves are reddish brown russet color. If you see in the villages or any green um, mango trees, when the first few new leaves comes, it's kind of reddish and brown color. The new, the very small uh, leaves of the mango trees. He's describing about that. Remarkably, this like the autumn tints on the Kashmir hills, but they change color soon as and become green. The seventh paragraph. Um, the monsoon rain were always welcome for they ended the summer heat but only could have too much of a good thing and Dehradun is one of the favor favored haunts of the rain god. Within the first five or six weeks of the break of the monsoon we would have about 50 or 60 inches of rain. So Dehradun was a very rainy place. It was heavy rain all the time for six to five to six weeks and uh, yes and and it was not ple pleasant to sit cooped up in a little narrow place trying to avoid the water dripping from the ceiling or rushing in from the window. He's describing a bit about his cell also in which he was living that it was not very pleasant uh, experience for him to just sit in the cell um, for 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 weeks um, and uh, and where the the raindrops are coming from the ceiling and uh, getting inside your room all the time and everything is dingy and wet and the eighth paragraph autumn again was pleasant and so was the winter except when it rained with thunder and rain and piercing cold winds. One, longer, lo one longed for a decent habitation and a little warmth and comfort. Occasionally there would be a hailstorm with hail hailstones bigger than marbles coming down on the corrugated iron roofs and making a tremendous noise, something like an artillery bombardment. He is describing about his cell that his cell was, the roof of the cell was uh, of tin. So whenever the hail storm used to come and hail stones used to drop on the cell roof, it was very noisy and it was a long rain. It didn't it never used to end in one hour or two hours. It used to linger for for a day or two. So it was kind of very, not very pleasant for him. Now ninth paragraph. I remember one day particularly, it was the 24th of December 1932. There was a thunderstorm and rain all day and it was bitterly cold. Altogether, it was one of the most miserable days from the bodily point of view that I have spent in jail. In the evening, it cleared up. Suddenly, all, suddenly and all my mis misery departed when I saw all the neighboring mountains and hills covered with a thick mantle of snow. The next day, Christmas Day, was lovely and, cheer and clear. And there was a beautiful view of snow-covered mountains. This is a lovely part which I really like. 25th of December as we all know that it's a Christmas day and that day uh, it's supposed to have snow and it would have been a beautiful view for him to have the snow at the same day. Though it was uh, the day before it was a bitter 
it was very cold for him but he still enjoyed after it all ended ninth paragraph is prevented from indulging in normal activities we become more observant of nature's way as i said before that uh, when uh, we don't have much time uh, we don't have uh, we have plenty of time and we don't have much to do much activities to do so we get more observant we get more uh, we uh, kind of observe more about different things about tiny things of life like nature in this case we watched also the various various animals and insects that came our way as i grew more observant i noticed all manner of insects living in my cell or in the little yard outside i realized that while i complained of loneliness that yard which seemed empty and deserted was teeming with life all these creeping or crawling or fl flying insects lived their life without interfering with me in any way and i saw no reason why i should interfere with them but there was continuous war between me and the bed bugs mosquitoes and to some extent flies wasps and hornets i tolerated and there were hundreds of them in my cell there had been a little tiff between us tiff means a bit of uh, argument or a bit of tension between us in evidently i think in evidently is durghatna varsh i wasp and stung me in evidently i think a wasp has had stung me uh, ek bidhni ne ya ek madhmakhi ne unko kaat liya wasp bidhni ko kehte hain yellow color ki hoti hai और एंड स्टंग का मतलब होता है कांटा चुभाना इन माई एंगर आई ट्राई टू एक्सटर्मिनेट द ऑल द लॉट बट दे पुट पुट अप अ ब्रेव फाइट इन डिफेंस ऑफ देयर टेरिटरी होम इन दिस ऑल्सो ही इज एप्रिशिएटिंग दो द वास्प हैज टंग हिम ही इज एप्रिशिएटिंग द फाइट बिटवीन दैम Um, now home which probably contained their eggs and i desisted and decided to leave them in peace if they did not interfere with me any more for over a year after that i lived in that cell surrounded by these wasps wasps and hornets and they never attacked me and we respected each other so there was a mutual re respect and a boundary for each other at after that point of time that they kind of both has understood that okay not to disturb each other and live in peace uh, the 11th uh, paragraph is bat bats i did not like but i had to endure them they flew soundlessly in the evening dusk and one could just see them against the darkening sky airy things airy means uh, ajeeb hona weird hona airy things i had a horror of them these uh, they seemed to pass within an inch of of one's face and i always afraid that they might hit me higher up in the air past the big bats the flying foxes uh sometimes in the villages um when we go in at the night time or at the evening time we, we can actually uh see them uh the little bats which goes here and there in the e in the evening time and uh sometimes we also get scared of you know if they will hit us or not but they never hit us they do their own work they collect their food or they collect their food for their ch uh, for their uh, child but they never interfere our life we are the one who interferes their life
So now the twelfth paragraph. I used to watch the ants and the white ants and other insects by the hour and the lizards as they crept about in the evening and stalked their prey and chased each other, wagging their tails in a most comic fashion. Ordinarily, they avoided wasps, but twice I saw them stalk them with enormous care and size, seize them from the front. Here, uh, we generally don't talk very nicely about lizards, but here he is also appreciating uh, their uh, uh, their uh, the way they they walk or the way they uh, <coughs> you know uh, uh, wag their tail so it shows that how the author is seeing the nature even the tiny bit and uh, even the tiny parts of nature uh, and uh, he's saying that they used to avoid uh, wasps the bidhniya jo hoti hai wo generally jo lizards hote hain wo bindiyon ko avoid karte hain khane se but here he was there there were sometimes that they used to get them in from the front not from the back because they had stings so i did not know if this avoidance of this of the sting was intentional or accidental but it's it's kind of weird that to understand that if they are doing it intentionally or they are doing it on purpose that not to eat them not to eat the wasps from the back because they have stings and from the front so that could be also their thought that okay let's eat them from the front not from the back and the 13th one 13th paragraph then there were squirrels crowds of them if trees were about they would become very venturesome venturesome ka matlab hota hai ah uh, okay venturesome ka matlab hota hai bahaduri <laughs> and uh, would become venturesome and come right near us in lucknow jail i used to sit reading almost without moving for considerable periods and a squirrel would climb up my leg and sit on my knee and have a look around and then it would look into my eyes and realize that i was not a tree or whatever it wa- it had taken me for fear would disable it for a moment and then it would scramper away sometimes he used to sit for hours without even uh, having a moment i read a book and sometimes a squirrel come to his knee on his knees or on his shoulders and he used to wander around in front of him and suddenly when the squirrel realizes that okay it's not a tree it's not something uh it's not it's a live it's a human being then it used to get a bit afraid of it and then suddenly they go away uh little baby squirrels would sometimes fall down from the trees the mother would come after them roll them up into a little ball and carry them off to safety occasionally the baby got lost one of my companion picked up three of these lost baby squirrels and looked after them they were so tiny that it was a problem feeding them the problem was however solved rather ingeniously a fountain pen filler with a little cotton wool attached to it made an efficient feeding bottle so one time there were three baby squirrels uh chote jo bacche hote hain gilehri ke wo gum gaye unki maa se aur uh, unka jo ek companion tha saath mein rehne wala jail mein he saved these three squirrels and took care of them the problem was that they were so small that it was very hard to feed them so they kind of did experiment about about how to feed them they used a fountain pen and filled it up with uh, whatever they used to feed them 
maybe milk or water and that's how they solve the problem now the 14th paragraph pigeons abounded in all the jails i went to except in the mountain prison of almora there were thousands of them sometimes the jail officials would shoot them down and feed on them there were manas of course they are too to be found everywhere so he's talking about the pigeons and there were there was another uh, bird called manna uh, which is which you can find anywhere but uh, find found anywhere a pair of them nested over my cell door in dehradun and i used to feed them they grew quite tame and if there was any any delay in their morning or evening meal they would sit quite near to me and loudly demand their food it was amusing to watch their signs and listening to their impatient cries so they were kind of pet to him they uh, he used to get habituated with feeding them all the time so whenever th- he got late on feeding them it was they used to come to him and uh remind him about about that the 15th paragraph now in nani there was there were thousands of parrots a large number of them lived in the crevices of a barrack walls their courtship and love making was always a fascinating sight and sometimes there were fierce squirrels quarrels between two male parrots over a lady parrot who sat calmly by waiting for the result of the encounter and ready to grant her favor to the winner here two parrots are fighting for the female parrot and then whoever get whoever wins the lady the female parrot would grant uh, her favor to the winner now the 16th paragraph Dehradun had had a variety of birds and there was a regular jumble of singing and lively chattering and twittering and high above it all came the quail's plaintive call during the monsoon and just before it the brain fever bird visited us and i realized soon why it was so named it was amazing the persistence with which it went on repeating the same notes in daytime and at night the sunshine and in pouring night pouring rain we could not see most of these birds we could only hear them as a rule as there were no trees in our little yard but i used to watch the eagles and the kites blinding gliding carefully high up in the air sometimes whooping down and then allowing themselves to be carried up by a current of air after often a horde of wild ducks would fly over our heads here the uh, author is describing about how many birds he was uh, how many birds he saw like uh, he used to see <coughs> variety of birds um coel and one very famous bird which was called brain fever bird he used that bird repeatedly used the same note of calling of of singing that's why it's called a uh, brain fever bird sometimes you maybe you get uh, sick of uh, uh, this uh, or get irritated of uh, the the same sound and uh, sometimes it was ducks flying over the sky and going away so now the 17th paragraph there was a large colony of monkeys in barley bareilly jail and their antiques were always worth watching one incident impressed me a baby monkey managed to come down into our barrack enclosure and he could not mount up the wall again the warder and some convict overseers and other prisoners caught hold of him and tied a bit of string around his neck 
the pre parents presumably of the little one saw all these all this from the top of the high wall and their anger grew suddenly one of them a huge monkey jumped down and charged almost right into the crowd which surrounded the baby monkey it was an extraordinary brave thing to do for the warders had sticks and lathis and they were waving them about and there was quite a crowd of them reckless courage triumphed and the crowd of humans fled terrified leaving their sticks behind them the little monkey was rescued sometimes it's very terrifying also to see how human brain works a small monkey uh, a baby monkey they tied a knot around him and try uh, i don't know maybe trying to tease him and then the brave parents of this of the little monkey they came and rescued so i think they are more sensible than humans i guess even i have seen in few of the places when you go to Hima, Hima, himachal pradesh in dharmshala there are many monkeys and they go in groups so the male monkeys and the young monkeys they will kind of form a group in which they will be the guards of the whole uh, remaining uh, group which is female and the kids the female and the kids will go with in the center of the whole group and the and the male monkey uh, who are young and who are powerful they will go and see uh, that where is uh, where there is danger or where it is safe to go and then they will slowly slowly they will move forward to search for food or to search for uh, accommodation and the uh, old monkeys also they they also like they are like you know behaving like okay i am we are the leader of the leader of the whole group so i have seen this and it's very fascinating for me because we will also do the same kind of thing if we are in, we are in the group uh, we are very similar to monkeys i guess um because of the history uh, we would do we would save our kids and the family and uh, then we will move forward now the 7 18th paragraph we often had animal visitors that were not welcome scorpions were frequently found in our cells especially after a thunderstorm it was surprising that i was never stung by one for i would come across them in the most unlikely places on of my bed or sitting on a book which i had just lined up i kept a particularly black and poisonous looking brute in a bottle of some or for some time feeding him with flies etc and then when i tied him up on a wall with a string he managed to escape i had no desire to meet him loose again and so i cleaned my cell out and hunted for him everywhere but he he had vanished here he is describing about a scorpion scorpion that uh, he found in a in his cell and how he managed to escape the scorpion not jawaharlal nehru uh, he managed to escape and uh, he was he was finding him he was searching for him but he couldn't find him uh, the 19th paragraph three or four snakes were also found in my cell or near them new news of one of them got out and there were headlines in the press as a matter of fact i welcome the diversion prison life is dull enough and everything that breaks through the monotony is appreciated not that i appreciate or welcome snakes but they do not fill me with terror as they do uh, some people i am afraid of their bite of course and would protect myself if i saw a snake but there would there would be no feeling of repulsion or overwhelm overwhelming fright centipedes horrifying me such mo uh, much more it is not so much fear as instinctive repulsion in 
Aripur, Alipur jail in Calcutta, I woke up in the middle of the night and felt something crawling over my foot. I pressed a torch and I had and I saw a centipede on the bed. Instinctively and with amazing rapidly rapidity, I vaulted clear out or of that bed and clearly hit the cell wall. I realized fully then what Volvo's pav pa uh, Pavlo's reflexes were. Here he is describing about uh, one of the incidences that happened to him in the jail where a snake was on his bed and how he got frightened up. But then again he is also describing that if he will see a snake somewhere he, he won't get scared of it uh, as many other people would. He is kind of a nature friendly person that's what the author is describing here. In Dehradun I saw a new animal or rather an animal which was new to me. I was standing at the jail gate talking to the jailer when we noticed a man outside carrying a strange animal. The jailer sent for him and I saw something between lizard and a crocodile about two feet long with claws and a scary covering, scaly covering. This animal which was very much alive had been twisted around in a most peculiar way forming a kind of knot and it, uh, its owner had passed a pole through this knot and was merely carrying it in his in this fashion he called it a bow when asked by the jailer what he proposed to do with it he replied with a bow, broad smile that he would make a bhuji a kind of curry out of it he was a forest dweller subsequently i discovered from reading f w Campion's books book the jungle in sunlight and shadow this that this animal was the pangolin so in the 20th paragraph he is writing about he saw a new uh, animal that he never saw it before and the guy who was taking it he was calling it bow and uh, then he got to know uh, by reading a book that it was called pangolin um, so this was the 20th paragraph now the 21st one prisoners especially long-term convicts have to suffer most from emotional starvation often they seek some some uh, some emotional satisfaction by keeping animals pet animal pets the ordinary prisoner cannot keep them, but the convict overseers have a little more freedom and the jail staff, uh, staff usually does not object. The, the commonest pets were squirrels and strangely mongooses. Dogs are not allowed in the jail, but cat seems to be encouraged. A little kitten made friend with me once. It was it belonged to a jail official and then he was transferred. He took it away with him. I missed it. I always I although dogs are not allowed, I tried up I tied up with some dogs accidentally in Dehradun. A jail official had brought a bitch and then he was transferred and he dis deserted her he, the poor thing he became a homeless wanderer living under culvert, culvert, culverts picking up scarves from the warders usually starving as i was being kept in the lock, lock up outside the jail proper uh, she used to come to me begging for food and i begin to feed her regularly and she gave birth to a little of pups under a culvert. Many of these were taken away, but three remained and I fed them. One of the puppies 
fell sick, fell ill with a violent distemper and gave me a great deal of trouble. <laughs> I nursed her with care and sometimes I would get up a dozen times in the, in the course of the night to look after her. She survived and I was happy that my nursing had pulled her round. Here he is describing about uh, pets. Uh, if you have, if personally if you have pets at your home, then, then you will uh, realize that how hard it is to take care of the pets, how hard it is for your mother to take care of the pets. Um, you have to clean them, you have, you have to feed them, you have to comb them, especially the dogs. And here he is describing that the jailer, uh, in some jails, dogs were not allowed but other pets, small pets were allowed like squirrel and uh, uh, cats. So in one of the jails, in Dehradun jail only, he was, he was caught up with uh, a female dog, a bitch. And uh, he took care of her because he was ab she was abandoned by her uh, uh, malik ke saath wo, uh, malik ne usko chhod diya tha. she was abandoned so then it was kind of uh, she took care he took care of them and he s saved one of the pup paragraph 22nd i came in contact with animals far more in prison than I had done outside. I had always been fond of dogs and I had kept some, but I could never look after them properly as other matters claimed my attention. In prison, I was grateful for their company. Indians do not, as a rule, approve of animals as household pets. It is remarkable that in spite of their general philosophy of non-violence to animals, they are often singularly careless and unkind to them. Even the cow, that favoured animal, though looked up to and almost worshipped by many Hindus and often the cause of riots, is not treated kindly. Worship and kindness does not always go together. Uh, so, worship, religion and here he is trying to say that religion and culture does not depend on each other so all, all the time so that's why worship and kindness do not always go together uh, we can see many examples of killing elephants though uh, you know we have a god a Ganesha of the same uh, kind and monkeys, we are not very kind to monkeys as well. There are many other examples that uh, that you can see. Now, 23rd paragraph, which is the last one. Different countries have adopted different animals as a symbol of their, of their ambition or character. The eagle of the United States of America and of Germany, the lion and bulldog of England, the fighting cock of France, the beer of old Russia. How far do these Petron animals mold national characters? Most of them are aggressive fighting animals, beasts of prey. It is not surprising that the people who grow up with these examples where uh, before them should mold themselves consciously after them and strike up aggressive attitude and roar and pray or others. Nor it is surprising that the Hindu should be mild and non-violent for his patron animal uh, is the cow. So here he is giving some examples that these <coughs> countries has their patron animals as an aggressive one lions or bulldogs these kind of and uh, <clears throat> in that comparison if we see not every european or every westernized people are aggressive at the same time not every indian or asian is uh, non-violent so 
in the last paragraph in which he is conclu- kind of concluding the whole chapter now this is something a uh, very uh, uh, as i have s- uh, s- s- told you in the beginning that uh, uh, this is a kind of par- uh, kind of chapter which you can go uh, read it in a flow and without any uh, disturb distur- disturbance um, so go through it again and i hope you will like it